Is this thing on? class the chicano movement has many components to it but all of these components have the same intention which was to combat racism have a presentation for chicanos and guarantee chicanos rights chicano murals are consciously made to entertain influence and solidify transnational communities as frosto once said chicano art has been closely aligned with political goals in the chicano struggles for self-determination as it seeks to be the link between lived realities to the imagination chicano art is intended for the viewer to grasp not only the aesthetic but also the social reality lived in it so you might be wondering why are chicano murals so important to the chicano movement Hidden in the beauty of Chicano murals is an argument for cultural pride and political activism as it is being inserted into the public space of a community showing off its symbolic representations of struggle and liberation. These murals use themes, motifs, and iconography that give ideological direction in what messages the murals are conveying. By having these murals, artists have turned into visual edu educators to those who are admiring the art and are curious to know the background behind these murals. Due to this mass Chicano movement, Chicano artists, activists, and intellectuals united to articulate the goal of a collective cultural project that would meld social practice and cultural production. As Canclini said, the Chicano movement was both nationalist, internationalist, class conscious and culturalist, reformist and revolutionary. In Chicano murals, there seems to be a tendency to have a double of constructs. This could either be bicultural, bilingual, or biconceptual. With artists being able to go back and forth between different landscapes and or work within a third landscape that encompasses both, Artists are able to mirror the Chicano movement by presenting its art in a biconceptual way as well. There is a saying in Chicano culture that goes, ni de aquí, ni de allá, which translates to, not from here or from there. This saying also has a biconcept that many murals have shed light to. With Chicano murals highlighting this feeling of not from here or not from there, makes Chicanos feel seen and heard and gives non-Chicanos an idea of how Chicanos may often feel about themselves. With Chicano murals, I can see the saying being switched around to de aquí y de allá, which translates to from here and from there, as these murals encapsulate the feeling of joy and pride of being a Chicano. One of the most inspirational muralists was David Alfaro Siqueiros. His work can be seen in places such as San Francisco, New York City, Mexico City, and many more. Siqueiros was known to be the first Mexican to paint the first major outdoor painting in Los Angeles. Though there were immediate efforts to destroy his art, his art would then reveal itself to a generation of Chicano artists and activists who would become inspired by Siqueiro's art and continue the art style he brought to life. Alfredo Ramos Martinez was the director at Santa Anita Ixtapalapa, the school Siqueiro's was attending. Martinez focused on Mexican art that would feature Mexican subject matters and not privileged European themes. Siqueiro's noted that it marked the beginning of a new aesthetic. This new aesthetic was filled with natural environments and popular culture of Mexico, and especially with its pre-Hispanic culture. <laughs> Chicano murals also saved communities by putting a stop to gentrification. You might ask, how did something as simple as murals accomplish a complex thing such as stopping gentrification which saved communities? I know, it's almost too good to be true, but it actually happened. 
The Mission District was a neighborhood that transitioned into a predominantly Chicano community after World War II. Since then, Mission District prided itself in having a Chicano identity. Unfortunately, like many other POC neighborhoods, Mission District faced gentrification. As the barrio was getting continuous threats of displacement, this encouraged the political mobilization in Chicanos. In 1971, the first documented mural in Mission was widely recognized as a powerful political tool. This mural had messages of ethnicity and politics of local residents, and most notably, the quality of the art protected the old neighborhood buildings that might have been in interest of those outside of the community or be subjected to destruction such as graffiti. We shall continue to fight, my friends, for Chicano Park under the bridge. Chicano Park is a park that perfectly encapsulates the different purposes of Chicano murals. As a predominantly Mexican-American neighborhood known as Logan neighborhood began to be displaced due to the junkyards taking over in order to make a highway, people became outraged but didn't know about protests or fighting back. With Highway 5 making its way into neighborhoods, many had become displaced and had seen other communities become displaced as well as communities that lived where Coronado Bridge is at. Before anyone knows it, Many had to leave their homes because they were going to build a bridge there. A community member then pondered, what could change this? As he walked around the pillars for the bridge. Community members would meet for a community council meeting and were told by the city that they would get a park. These meetings went about for three years. To honor this wish for a park, the city began to build a bridge. The park never happened community members felt lied to as no one from the city told them that it would be a bridge instead. People started protecting the land by using their body to block the city of building a highway patrol. This movement of protecting this land brought people together and formed a sense of unity and pride in Chicano culture. With the efforts of community members, the highway patrol did not get built. The land then became Chicano Park. Community members began to start the murals in 1973. Chicano artists began painting Chicano slash Mexican role models and leaders that people could look up to. At this time, Chicano murals were something foreign and barely receiving life. These murals encapsulated history such as Chicano historical political events all the way to the present, highlighting Chicano lifestyles such as lowrider, Pachuco styles and encapsulated the beauty of unity by painting Chicanos coming together and fighting for a cause and display messages that say Chicano power to stay. While the murals were being painted, all different community members started being active in helping the Logan neighborhood create the Chicano Park. Chicano art such as danza, folklorico, mariachi were beginning to flourish because of all of the organization taking place in Chicano Park. Chicano Park began to be a safe space for Chicano culture to flourish and made Chicanos feel seen and heard. By being surrounded by the beauty of Chicano culture, it is impossible to not appreciate the culture or take pride in being proud of being Chicano. In Tucson, also known as Chukchon, is the home of many Chicano muralists and artists who use their art as a form of activism by showcasing the Chicano movement, pre-Hispanic culture, and representing Chicano people and their culture. These murals are mainly seen in predominantly Chicano neighborhoods, schools, community resources, and are scattered throughout town. Today, I will be talking about two Chicano local artists who you might have seen their Chicano murals around town. Adeline Olea is a Chicana muralist whose family moved to Tucson in the 60s and has stayed here ever since. She grew up in Barrio Hollywood, a neighborhood that is predominantly Chicano. 
Because of how much Barrio Hollywood means to Adeline, she has donated many murals to the community of Barrio Hollywood in hopes of giving back to the community who once raised her. Adeline's interest in creating Chicano murals started when she saw the injustices happen in Arizona and Tucson Unified School Districts when Raza studies were being banned due to the passing of the Bill 2281. By seeing this injustice, Adeline began creating Chicano murals at predominantly Chicano schools such as Manso Elementary and Roscruz K-12. Her murals consist of pre-Hispanic art, Chicano people, culture, and staples of Tucson such as the local restaurant Pat's Chili Dogs and the iconic sign of Barrio Hollywood. As Adeline said, it's all about planting a seed in the minds of the community. By being a visual educator, this is Adeline's way of activism within the Chicano community. David Lineo is another artist who you have probably seen his Chicano murals around town. David was born in Douglas, Arizona, but spent most of his life in Tucson. David collaborated with one of the most largest and most famous works of mural art named Nuestras Raíces Humanas in Tucson, while also taking painting classes at Pima College. He renewed his ties with the El Rio Neighborhood Center and, in 1976, was asked by them to paint a mural, which he said yes, and the rest is history. His murals are still seen all around El Rio Neighborhood Center. During the 1970s, Dineo spent most of his time working with Brown Berets, Mecha, and other community activist groups. He is still considered one of the most influential leaders of the Chicano mural movement in Arizona. Dineo helped lead the development of Chicano mural movements in Arizona and in Tucson during the late 20th century. He remains to be an important part of Tucson's visual history. Dineo often has themes of struggle, identity, and salvation, which are expressed through his brilliant colors and unique brushwork. As David said, art conveys the sense of the human spirit and the humanity of hope. As Chicano murals highlight the Chicano movement and serve as a positive representation of Chicano culture and people, Chicano murals also serve as an inspiration to Chicano youth as they can see themselves in the murals emerging in their beautiful, rich culture and remembering that being Chicano is beautiful and no one can ever say otherwise.